an organisation set up to help people in remote Aboriginal communities who suffer from a rare genetic disorder, is worried about funding pressures as the disease continues to spread. Makaro Joseph disease leaves sufferers wheelchair bound and eventually stops them from being able to swallow food. A grant promised to the MJD Foundation by the previous Federal Indigenous Affairs Minister has been cancelled by the new Minister Nigel Scullion. But he's assured carers and sufferers they'll continue to get the support they need. Michael Coggan reports. The Aboriginal community of Nooka at the southern end of Arnhem Land is one of the most isolated in the country. The population varies between 1,500 and 2,000. Almost 80 of them are directly related to Elder David Daniels, who has the hereditary neurodegenerative condition Mikado Joseph disease. Many of his relatives have the MJD disorder, but are yet to show symptoms. Nearly. Every third one of them got MJD. You want help? You gotta help them by. The Mikado Joseph Disease Foundation organised this gathering to teach the family members about the high likelihood that MJD has been passed on to them. The father of 13 children was diagnosed in 2009. MJD has taken his ability to walk and is affecting his speech. The 68-year-old needs round-the-clock support but it hasn't hurt his sense of humour. My leg is slack. Everything is right. I can punch you on <laughs> It's not exactly clear how the disease arrived in Australia. Prior to the 1990s, poisoning was suspected from manganese mining on Groot Island off the Arnhem Land coast because of the large numbers of sufferers there. They called it Groot Island Syndrome. But recent research suggests MJD came from China, possibly hundreds or even thousands of years ago. This disease is actually quite common in southern China. It's, po it's possible the disease came to Australia via base to mare traders trading with China. And what we'll do is we'll get you to stand so we'll start nice and easily. Until this year, Bronwyn Daniels was a carer for her father. There's a little bit of a sway, but not much. But now her own MJD symptoms are too severe to continue. I became weaker and weaker. And then I tried to run one part, but I couldn't. It's a strain of MJD that tends to appear in younger generations earlier. So we know that we're going to see an acceleration of the amount of people and the age will be decreasing in terms of when they present with symptoms. The MJD Foundation was set up on Groot Island in 2008 and now supports more than 80 people with symptoms in the Territory and North Queensland and is preparing to help hundreds of people at risk of developing the disease. There are about 540 people who are at risk of developing MJD. They're people who are direct descendants of people with MJD and we would anticipate that in the next generations um, there's a 50% chance for people with a parent and a 25% chance for people with a grandparent with MJD. And the search continues for a cure. Almost certainly we'll find drugs that will ameliorate the disease but whether we'll really get a good cure or a proper prevention uh, in the form of a drug has yet to be seen. The Foundation wants to establish full-time support services in Arnhem Land communities where MJD is growing. But the Federal Government's decision to cancel a $10 million grant from an Aboriginal mining royalties fund has put that expansion on hold. It's not the best thing for me to just be flying in and flying out every five weeks. We need local people here on the ground to be employed by the Foundation um, that are here all day, every day, that can provide um, extra support to people with MJD. So go down and clap, down and clap. The Foundation was going to invest the $10 million and use the returns to provide long-term funding, but the government is offering half a million dollars a year to cover the loss of the grant. In terms of the money that they receive, it is exactly the same. Uh, the only question can be, uh, in, in three years' time, um, who's going to be around to ensure that that, that money, those, that funding is rolled over? Well, certainly if we're in government, we've already made that undertaking. 
As more of his family face the possibility of a premature death from MJD, David Daniels wants the foundation to continue to work to improve their lives. So it gives good support to people who all have MJD, like me and my children and the rest of the club crew. But the government believes the spread of the disease will be slow and it will be years before there is any dramatic increase in need for support for MJD patients in remote Australia. Michael Coggan, Lateline.